here is the comparison that I obtained for the magnitudes. And the comparison, here's the magnitude, and here is the phase plot. The red waveforms correspond to the result for the quadratic interpolations. And we can see that this result for quadratic elements looks better than the result for linear elements. For example, here, at a half wavelength and one wavelength, the phase changes more abruptly between being positive and negative for the quadratic elements. And here in the magnitude, at the top of the first peak, here I have zoomed in on, on that first uh, peak, the magnitude waveform is smoother, and on the bottom here, where I've zoomed in on the null at one wavelength, the waveform actually reaches zero for the quadratic elements, as we would expect it to. All right, well, at this point, we've spent a lot of time constructing an FEM model. Now that it's constructed, we could use the same model to study lots of different scenarios. For example, we could add a material layer here, a single layer or multiple layers, and we could add it into the simulation by just uh, adjusting beta for the elements. Any elements that are in this range, say, you know, maybe there's 10 right here, we could set the beta when we calculate the Ke coefficients. We could set the beta for those elements to 2 pi over lambda naught, that's what we have right now. And if there's a material there, we can just put in the square root of epsilon r, the permittivity, relative permittivity of that material layer. And changing beta will change, it'll show up in the Ke coefficients for those elements. And then as we perform the matrix assembly, we can account for the different elements in different parts of the grid having different beta values. We could also extend what we've done in one dimension, we could extend it to two dimensions. As I mentioned earlier, FEM is particularly advantageous when we're modeling complex shapes. For example, here you can see that if we use a simple, a simple arrangement of rectangular elements to model this complex shape, we're going to get this discretization error. But if we strategically position the nodes of the grid so that they are positioned along the surface of the domain, the model can match the shape of the domain much better. Also, we can use different shapes for the elements, like triangle, triangles, as shown on the left, or quadrilaterals, as shown on the right. We can even extend this idea to three dimensions. Here is an example FEM model having a dialectic sphere at the center, and there's free space around it, so we're only modeling half of the sphere. Since the wavelength shrinks in a dielectric, the density of the elements is higher in this dielectric sphere versus the surrounding out outer um, where there's free space. And lastly, we can construct higher order elements in two dimensions and three dimensions, as you can see here, where the elements have nodes at the corners and also at the midpoints of each edge. Or in three dimensions, it's at the corners and then also at the midpoints of the edge and also the midpoints of the sides of the element. Or here, there's also one at the center of the element. Whether solving the finite element method in one dimension, 2D, or 3D, the overall steps are the same as listed here. We followed these same steps when we constructed the one-dimensional model. So overall, the finite element method is particularly helpful when the solution would just take way too long to obtain in the time domain. On the other hand, the main disadvantage of FEM is that the model results in a large system of equations, and it's not easy to parallelize a system of equations that need to be solved simultaneously on a supercomputer. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have more time in this course to study the finite element method. Uh, note that a lot of what we learned for the FDTD method also applies here to FEM. For, exa for example, FEM models also use boundary conditions like PML, and we can also use the surface impedance boundary condition. If after this course you would like to become more familiar with FEM, there is a course in mechanical engineering. Uh, FEM was first developed for mechanical engineering. 
And so there's a course there where that goes into a lot more detail on FEM. And in that course, they will be solving a different set of equations, uh, equations relating to mechanical engineering, but you can still apply the same methods that they use. You can use the same methods when solving electromagnetic problems. Well, that's it for this semester. Thank you so much for taking this class. Contact me if you run into any issues getting your FEM code to work, or if you have any other questions. And I hope you have a wonderful summer.